uh, not upon action or generalized uh, notions of outrage or uh, public opinion, uh, lay opinion. Rather, issues such as this in a court of law are to, to uh, be based upon the specific evidence that's available and application of legal standards that has been uh, uh, articulated in the legislature and uh, is to be applied by the court. Appreciate very much the council in address things in that uh, in that action. And although there may be uh, many in the public who like to have a one sentence summary of a case such as this and, and, and form held uh, opinions based on that, we understand the role of the court and the role of council is quite different from that. I look forward to hearing the argument you have to make uh, in that regard. Mr. DeBalance. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, for the record, uh, Todd DeBalance. Back, back in 
in 2007, she received a written correspondence from the meeting that was attached to the B to her initiation in which she relied upon. That was that Christine Cushing would be removed from the home, that the children would have no contact with Christine Cushing, would abide by the terms of the safety plan. That divorce was finalized, Your Honor, in February of 2008. The second divorce to Christine Cushing was finalized in February of 2008. One month later, March is back into the home, again, having been with the children. It is undisputed in this case, and it's, and it's, it's also noted in the Commissioner's front reconsideration that these children, these two children, were told, were told from their mother. They were to deceive their mother back to Christine, who's back in the home, introduced to her by a different name. It wasn't until recently that Ms. Conlon discovered that Christine was back in the home. As soon as she did discover that they were back in the home, she immediately took action. She filed her petition. I think it's very important for this court to understand that the ex parte commission granted a, a restraining order, a temporary restraining order, that was provided with notice to Mr. Mr. Cushing. He did not appear at the ex parte hearing. We have back on the commissioner's calendar and we asked for a restraining order. The temporary restraining order was granted. A 30-day restraining order was granted to keep these children away from Christine Cushing. When we returned on adequate cause, the commission had the motion, and we believe the commissioner's fine regard, given the previous restraining order, being consistent. Now, ultimately, Your Honor, this comes to the father's judgment in this case. Beyond bringing a woman back into his home and exposing his children to one of the he kills, killed children, his own children, in fact, that he's involved the children in this action by having them lie to their mother, deceive their, their mother, refer to this woman by a different name. Uh, that is emotionally detrimental to children. Um, one can't imagine being 13 years old and have a face with, with the reality that the woman in the next room had previously killed children while they were sleeping. Now, the law in this case, Your Honor, is very much important to the court. It needs to be a distinction between adequate cause and the actual modification of a parenting plan. It provided to the court in our, in our strict reply argument on revision of the case. Uh, and the court should have a cut. In the Ziegler case, the court distinguishes the difference between adequate cause and the actual modification. The, the standard in RCW 2609-270 is the adequate cause requirement. That is the first step. Once you clear that first step, the next is under 260, which is the mother's actual detriment to the children. Uh, the Ziegler court further criticized the case law that was cited by my colleague in, in, uh, in her motion, in her, in her brief, that the will remove case actually were type of direct evidence of detriment. The case contradicts that and criticized uh, that related will remove. So, uh, as stated earlier, this is a petition for a modification under both uh, 262C and subpart 4 regarding domestic violence. When we look at RCW 260 uh, subpart 4, it references us back to RCW 209.191. In statute, subpart 2B specifically holds that a parent's residential time with a child shall be the, if that if it is found that that person resides with a person who is in conduct defined as a history of domestic violence, assault, or bodily harm. So, certainly in this particular case, the killing of children would fall with domestic violence or serious, serious bodily harm. There is no statute of limitations on the killing of children. It's a crime that is committed. It's an act that is committed for life. It's an act that carries very serious messages. There is no statute of limitations provided in RCW 2609-191. The history is a concern here, Your Honor. It's a, it is a concern in this case for these two children. Um, we believe that adequate cause has been allowing this case to go forward, allowing Ms. Conlon to have a full hearing. The underlying basis, the, the, the principle in all of our cases, all of our statutes, the legislative end behind this is to protect the best interests of the children. And it's in the interest of the children in this case uh, to allow the case to go forward, to allow there to be a parenting evaluation to determine what fear these children have. How are these children doing? How are they doing emotionally? How are they doing socially? Uh, that, that, is a, that is a concern that this court uh, this court should investigate and have evaluated. There is a concern as to Ms. Christine Cushing's current mental health. Her, the status of her current mental health remains largely unknown to us, Your Honor. Her therapist provided a letter that, that he felt that she was no risk to children. But that is a reading therapist. That is not somebody in a forensic role to, to, to ride the court with a forensic analysis or opinion. I would also note, we do not know if Christine Cushing told, has told her current therapist that she has killed children. The letter references a history.
history of serious violence involving children. No, she didn't disclose to her therapist she's killed children in the past. This court, Your Honor, signed a, a protect order allowing us to get her therapy records. Those records were never received because when the adequate cause uh, order was entered denying, there was no active case pending and that, that request was quashed the next day. So we never got the records. Uh, you know, I could go on and on, Your Honor, but, but, but I believe the issue here before the court is adequate cause. This is not a case of uh, in, in which, you know, we refer to as any sniping or harassing. I think what the case is referred to is kind of adequate cause is, is a hearing for the kind of make sure that it, it isn't that type of case, that there, the case does have and there is a basis to go forward. And we have to look at the best interests of the children. Uh, and, and that is paramount in this case. Uh, you know, the, the children are in split custody. We have to where they're at now. Who's watching these children right now while we're in this courtroom? Like being left alone with Christine Cushing, that is a concern to my client. Um, and I, I want to close by saying that, um, that there was a there was a mention in the order on reconsidering distinguishing between major modification and our modification. And the Possinger case allows this court, the court has the authority to, to take what action is necessary to, to protect the best interest of the children, whether it's providing adequate safeguards, whether it's restrictions, uh, whether it's getting an evaluation done on, the, on, on this case. Uh, the court does have that authority under the statute as well. So, we ask that the court advise the commissioner fully. We ask that the court adequate cause. Uh, beyond finding adequate cause, my client is also asking the court to grant her preliminary parenting plan. Under the terms of the proposed temporary parenting plan, uh, Mr. Cushing would have the children have visitation with the children on alternating weekends, but the children would reside with uh, Ms. Ms. Conlin. Um, and we ask that Mr. Cushing have no contact uh, with the children at any full hearing. The treatment in this matter is set for. May 21st, 2012, uh, and I think that should give us enough time to get the evaluations done and, and to be prepared for a full hearing on that day, Your Honor. Uh, you argued just a moment ago when you made the distinction between major and minor modification. Did you mean to be suggesting by that comment that an alternative available to the court would be to allow it to proceed as a minor modification to consider what uh, additional is to be appropriate for the parenting plan in order to, uh, to uh, continue with the general parameters as they exist? but with uh, uh, enhanced safety provisions. Exactly, Your Honor. And, and to be clear, so there, so there is no confusion, my client is asking the court for a major modification. However, uh, and I, 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 I had uh, reviewed the positive case just before I came into court this morning. But clearly the court had that authority, and I think that would be an alternate complete denial of that uh, because ultimately it has the, the concern is the best interest of the children that the court should look at in this case. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Arnold.